Okay. So we just finished our unit on spot illustration, unit 11. Now we're moving on to the next skill, which is type design. Type design is going to use the same skills we used when we did logo design, but now we are going to be using letter forms. So you could also think of this unit as a logo, logo type design unit, right? But instead of designing a logo type like Coca-Cola, we're going to design text, what's called a type solution, that's going to go with our spot illustration to make a poster. And that's all we're doing with this. So the only deliverable is assignment six. And assignment six has three components you turn in. The black type design, which will be done as a vector. The color type design, which will color in PhotoP as a raster using the smart object of the vector, just like we did color variations on our logos. And then the finished poster, which just puts it on a background with a border. The thing I'm going to teach you to start is not something you need to turn in, but something I definitely recommend you do. It's the way you do kind of thumbnail sketching for type design. And it's called typed blocking or text blocking. Now you'll see here, this is a, an established typeface that someone designed. It's like a tattoo typeface that I then modified for this example. So we'll learn how to modify from existing typefaces. We'll also learn how you can just make your own type completely. Right. So either way works as long as it can be black vector and then colorized and then used with your spot illustration with a background for a poster. Sometimes you'll have multiple styles of typefaces and type solutions all on the same poster. So for my morning class for assignment six, this is actually the vector by the end of the day, you know, and it has multiple kind of typefaces that are modified to get to that type solution. And I'm still working on it. So how do we start? We start by knowing the shape of our assignment five spot illustration. So go ahead and open that up in PhotoP. So I go to assignment five and I'm actually just going to use the JPEG or the PNG, the thing I turned in for the project, for just the line art. Why? Because that line art, that vector line art that I turned into a PNG or a JPEG and put into Canvas, that is the shape of my design. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and open up PhotoP. Helps if I spell it right. be one of those days and I'm gonna drop in just not my color because I think color distracts me a little bit at this stage just my line art and I'm just gonna do it as a JPEG then I'm gonna check my image size and it should be 11 by 14 by 350 right now I'm going to grow it because I need more space around it to design the type. So I'm going to go to image canvas size and I'm going to grow the canvas in inches to a whopping 18 inches by 24 inches. Bigger than we can print in this lab, but it gives me plenty of space to design type. Then I'm going to flatten it, layer flatten. Now Josiah, Hyde, Fabian, this is also a good way to design your title flag for, for your assignment six, right? For whatever is going to go with your characters. You might even design it over the top of your cast sheet. So you can kind of see how that type title design works with your, your colors and your imagery for your cast sheet. All right, so this is my spot illustration. What do I first need to do? I need to pick the text that's going to go with it. So if I scroll down, I've already picked it for my spot illustration, which is this girl on a Gorgon. I'm going to use the text Gorgon girl exclamation mark, right? So I'm going for kind of a, a tongue in cheek kind of motivational poster. Now let's learn a little bit about how to go about this project. So in the assignment, 
there is all kinds of type design that's needed in our culture. And in marketing, uh, one of the biggest areas, most visible, is what's called key art. And this is the art we see when we load up our, our streaming service. And when we go to a movie theater, we see movie posters, right? This is promotional art for these kind of type of media. So when Netflix is putting out a new season of Stranger Things, they know from the very first season of Stranger Things what their title design is. This is the kind of thing that digital honor students are trying to do for their characters right now, their title flag. What's interesting about the Stranger Things title design, and I have this whole article on it, which is fantastic here, under art of the title, is that, here, I'll do this without sound, otherwise it will get copyrighted. All right, but what they did is they played with just modifying an existing typeface. They go through the whole process here. They modified and were inspired by Stephen King's novels, especially, especially the way that Stephen King's name was always put on some of his novels. So you see they stole a lot in the placement from there in particular. And what they really played with is something called kerning. That's the space between the letters. But these were all of their different type blocking sketches different ways they they wanted to play with these ideas. I'm so glad they didn't do go with the uh, the three as the E and like these kind of games. So this is the basic typeface that they use for just their chapter titles, right? That's the typeface of the title flag, but the title flag is a lot more particular because they do what's called type setting. So the typeface is how the letter forms actually look the type setting is how closely they're placed together, how they're sized together, and they do something that's called um, merged kerning in their design. And you can see that merged kerning right here. The kerning is the space between letters. K-E-R-N, to kern, it's the space between letters. And they wanted it to feel uncomfortable. So they made the kerning super close, sometimes overlapping, sometimes bleeding and connecting between these letter forms. And then they did one additional thing which I liked. They, they framed the second word with the, the first and last initial of the first word, right? And then they added some lighting effects and some texture to kind of go with, we'll learn more about that later on. Uh, to, to reference kind of the 80s and old printmaking techniques because it's based on these old books, right? So there's two distinct phases to, to type design and title design, and that's to know what you're going to say, to choose a typeface to either mimic, modify, or create, and then to set it so it all looks good together. Now, once you have the title, like Kyle Lambert has for Stranger Things when they're doing promotional art for season two, then you have to merge it with the key art, you know, in our case, our spot illustration. And there's all kinds of different ways you can do that. You can set it on an angle. You can run it above. You can run it below. You can run it to the side. These are Kyle Lambert's blocking sketches for the Stranger, two, Stranger Things 2 season. Then once you pick your, your blocking, then all the elements come together. So that's what we're doing. Rye Ford is an artist that just likes to take interesting type and text, like Guilty Party, and then will sketch different ways to design it and block it, and then just makes their own typeface based on this. So this is the typeface. It's all done as a vector. And then these are the font variations on the typeface. An outline variation, a normal variation, and then a bold variation. Uh, someone I went to school with who does amazing independent poster design is Akiko Sternberger. You can look at all their websites and see more of their work. But what's so nice about Akiko's work is she not only does the illustration for the movie poster, she also does the type design. So it's not like what Marvel Studios does. You just take a lot of photos and then you hand them to someone. They put those photos together into the key art and then the type designer has to just make sense of it all. right? So you get kind of template-based posters. 
every type design here is unique to the project. And you, you were just talking about uh, The Last of Us, right? And she did all the, the promo art for that, for HBO Max. Now, that's a case where HBO already, already designed the title. So she had to integrate it with her artwork. And it's cool because now her artwork is getting turned into like murals in New York and LA and stuff to promote this stuff. Same thing for Turning Red. You know, Pixar had already designed that type design. So her artwork has to complement it and she has to design, figure out how the type and the, the image all work together in a poster. But when she was working for more independent movies, like on Netflix, she gets to design the whole type design of it. Or for these kind of reissue posters. Or for the Batman movie, she did a lot of interesting ones. I don't know if she has it on the newest Batman movie. Yeah. So here she got to design the type for it that was used on the posters. And the poster was able to be like turned upside down. So this is the Riddler version of the poster. You turn it upside down, it's the Batman version of it. Right? So you see him there. So it's a lot of fun to play with these things, but you have to really understand how to use type as well as images and then how it can all fit. This is actually one of my favorite ones for a very uh, lesser seen movie, <laughs> but, but just playing with the positive and negative space. It's an interesting movie. It's about a kaiju and a psychic link between a kaiju and this woman, but like everything's just made to work together very clearly. Whether you're using photos, whether you're using spot illustrations, whether you're using graphics, this this reissue of Point Break, you know, lots of fun. So you can add a lot with your type design, no matter what your influences are. And they can add a lot of personality to your spot illustration. So here we have Shepard Fairey, who has to often design text to go with the illustration imagery, whether it's for campaign posters, for advocacy, for street art, all that kind of thing. So this is our project. This is what you're responsible for. Black type design, color type design, and then putting it with your spot illustration on a background for a finished poster. Now we start with the text that we want to put with the shape of the spot illustration we want to use. What we do not want to do is just take a typeface as is and use it. So this is not just Helvetica, you know, used as is. It starts with a, a very typical modern typeface, but then it modifies it to fit the project. This is actually, this is one of his first, right? That is very inspired by the feminist artwork of Barbara Kruger that was started in the 1980s. And if this looks familiar to you, it's because she's stolen from very often by type designers. And that's what the clothing brand Supreme used for its branding, right? And then they, they just put it on everything. So type styles get imitated just like art styles. And type designers do copyright their type design because they are vectors, individual vector shapes, just like logos. And they license them to make money. So if you want to understand professional typeface font licensing, there was some conversation about that before class began. Here's a nice article about it because it is a, a more difficult thing to protect, right, than just your images. And you can make a good career as a typographer. But there is a site called Defont. It's like the, the Pixabay of typefaces. Except not everything here is just an open Creative Commons license. These are limited Creative Commons licenses that are free for personal use. And these are just the ones that were uploaded just now or yesterday. You know. So these are their most recent ones. But you can search them in lots of different ways. So if I look for like graffiti I can see lots of typefaces that are free for my personal use 
But if you're going to use them for a commercial campaign that has a budget, and there's 27 